Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the dummy variables as independent variables section. So this is kind of a long one because I have to go through each of the three models. And so um, if you have the data and you're following along with the University of Working data, um, I went ahead and kind of got everything set up here. I like to talk about these graphically, so I created them down here, but we'll talk about each of these um, individually. The simple ones are actually really, really quick. And so um, let's kind of just get started. Um, so. What we're going to try and do is we're going to predict the percent of total enrollment that are black or African American in a college uh, using the type of institution and tuition and fees. And so um, I'm going to predict this and then I want to use this and this. The only problem with this is, kind of the first time and why dummy variable is super, super useful is, this is non-numeric. Right? And so unless I make this a number, Excel is not going to be able to tell me anything about the difference between those two. And so that's why we use dummy variables. And sort of the easiest one to do is sort of model one. So this is a model with a dummy variable that is also with a continuous variable. So this is our X or continuous variable. Right? The tuition and fees. And then this institution type is going to be our dummy variable. But we have to turn it into numeric. And so I'm going to insert a column here, and um, I think the easiest way to do this, um, you can talk, you can learn more about this, it's up to you, but like, so public versus private, and so I have to choose which one I want to include in the model and which one I want to exclude. Um, if I had more than two categories, I would have to put additional dummy variables, but sort of the dummy variable trap is, I have two categories here, so I only actually need one dummy variable to control for each. And so I'm going to do, um, I'm going to call this uh, public. Oops. Public. And then this is going to be our dummy variable. So what I want, and the nice thing about dummy variables are they only take on two values, either one or zero. So one if a characteristic is present, uh, or zero if not. And so essentially every time this says public, I want my dummy variable to equal one. And if it says private, I want it to be zero. So we can do this with a simple if command. So if you do equals if. We open in parentheses. We say if this cell equals, and then because it's a word, we need to use the quotes and then just type public. Exactly how it looks. I don't think it's case sensitive. Um, and then comma. Well, if it's true, what value do I want? Well, I want a one. And comma. If it's false, what do I want? I want a zero. Right, so I close parentheses and enter. And notice, right, the public. Okay, it says public. It's one. Let's make sure it works for all of them. Right, we double click them down. Private zero. So perfect. Now, we actually have everything we need to estimate this first model. Um, something you might want to do, so like if we move these columns around, the formulas don't get messed up. Um, now that we have this in the value settings that we want, if you click on this and then copy, and then if you right click and paste the values, um, you also can go down here on the drop down and, and paste the values as well. Um, I like to go ahead and do that. That way, like if I move this around, like I don't need the formula. I actually don't even need this variable at all anymore. You could de delete it to make um, to make life easier if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So for model one, I'm going to do data analysis, and you can kind of follow along if you're in my class on the, the formula sheet. It's the simplest one. Um, you can do regression. We'll do okay. So again, my Y range. I'm going to predict the percent of total enrollment that are black or African American. All right, and then my X variables. So it's technically X and D, so we need X and the dummy variable. It's just um, the continuous and the dummy variable. So tuition and fees in public. Again, we don't want to select the words because it won't work. Control work command shift down. Hit enter. Again, I have the labels. I'm going to put the output range um, up next to, to the data here. And so let's just put this in, um, let's put it in maybe G here. So hit OK. All right, and again, um, so I'm going to make sure this kind of fits. And now, we can talk about this, but I'm going to estimate the other ones first. So this is just going to be, um, I'm going to say model one. So model one, and we'll go and graph it here in just a little bit, actually. Um, okay, so model two is a dummy interaction with a continuous variable. So an interaction is just when you multiply the continuous variable by the dummy variable. And so... Um, I'm again going to insert a column here, so I'll do insert, and then I'll do, um, let's do tuition times public, and so if you want, you can do XD, because that's just what it is, and then we just multiply the two, so we're going to do this, click on the tuition cell, and then times public, I want to enter, 
right, and we'll double click it down. Uh, and so this model, right, a dummy interaction with a continuous variable. So now I only need these two. So I need my continuous and then my interaction. So let's just go ahead and do that. Data, data analysis, regression. Um, and so I just need to change this range. And actually, it's already set up. So just need continuous and interaction. Don't get that dummy in there. That's the last model. So I enter. And then I'm going to change where this is set up. So it'll show it to me maybe here. Let's do here. Okay. Again, it doesn't really matter as long as. You're kind of set. We'll do OK. All right, now I'll relabel this. Um, take model two. And again, I'll talk back about like how we interpret the coefficients and stuff, and like why we would need this. Um, and then model three is we actually have everything. So a dummy variable, a dummy interaction, and a continuous variable. We have all this. All right, so I have continuous, my interaction, and the dummy. So I just need to select all three of these. So we'll do. Data, data analysis, regression. So again, I'm still predicting right, my y variable is good. I just need to change my, my x range to get all three of these. So I enter. And again, I, I want to change where this is. So here. here. We'll do okay. Perfect. And then we'll change this to be model three. Okay, so now I want to talk about all three of these. All right, so and I like to do it graphically, and so let's I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. All right, so model one. Um, essentially, all a dummy variable does when it's in a model by itself, it's really easy. It tells you the difference in the y variable from when the dummy variable equals one and when it equals zero. So in this case, right, it's just public versus what category did we leave out? Right, we left out the private not-for-profit. It's really easy when we have two categories. If we had three categories, uh, it would get a little bit more hairy. You have to remember what the base case is, what you left out. But I talked about that in a lecture. But when it's just by itself here, it's relatively easy. You would say, so our Y variable is um, percent of total enrollment in black um, that are black or African American. So we could say four public colleges, and this is different from what we've done in the past because it's no longer continuous. Um, we'd say uh, public colleges. Uh, so let's try this again. Let's say the percent of African American or black students is, and so we'd say the coefficient, let's go 17.66, and then because it's difference in percent, we want to say percentage, percentage points lower at, uh, let me go to the next line, at public universities public, let's say colleges slash universities, then at private not for profit. And then on average, so, um, on average in dollar else constant. And you can say this so many different ways. You could say, right, um, public colleges have 17 percentage point lower enrollment of African Americans um, than not for profit, and, and you can flip it like a bunch of different ways. But that's how you interpret this coefficient. It's super easy uh, in terms of when it's by itself. Uh, and graphically how we do this is, so what I generally do is I start as if this variable wasn't in the model. And so essentially for public not profit colleges, um, it's going to be, so it looks like 39 percentage points or 39% um, as a starting point, and then it decreases as tuition and fees decrease. So if I was drawing that on the graph over here, I would do insert, I would do shape. All right, I would say start here, and then the slope is negative. So it has a negative slope. And so this, right, is for, all right, not, so I'll say private, private. Um, same thing saying not for profit. And so I essentially just ignore this whole thing, and then I go, okay, public is now in the model. Uh, well, this variable is now going to equal one, so I'm left with this coefficient. Now, I talk about this a lot in lectures, so it's hard to, to just mention on the screen here. But like, you're going to be left with a constant. So what you're going to do is, right, you're going to add essentially like terms. You're going to add this negative 17 to the intercept, and then the slope is going to stay the same. So I would just do equals, and then do this plus this, and enter. And so now, this line is going to start much lower, right? Insert. And again, sorry, this is really hard to, to walk through without like, an actual map, but I don't want this to, to take forever. So insert a shape. 
Right, so this line would start lower, how much lower? 17 points. But then it would be parallel. Right, so instead of being private, copy, paste, this would be for public colleges. Right, and you can change the color, maybe you want to make this like red or something like that to, to distinguish. And so it's saying, right, tuition and fees as they increase the percent enrollment of African Americans um, decreases at the same rate. It's just that public universities are always lower. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So this is kind of the easiest one, which might be a little bit intimidating. Um, but we can do more, and there will be a, an additional resource link as well. And so for model two, right, now you don't have that, that dummy variable um, by itself. You have the interaction term, right, which actually makes life a lot harder. Uh, so I'm going to graph this one first. And so I'm going to, again, assume this dummy variable doesn't exist. Right, so I'm only going to look here, right, the continuous portion. So if I looked at enrollment and tuition, again, it's going to be a downward sloping line. And so I'm just going to honestly just copy this. Let's see, I want this, I want this, I'm going to copy. I'll go into here and I'll paste. Oh, well, it didn't do it very well. Do here. All right, and so I have this line for private schools. But then if I want public, I've got to add this in. Well, so when this public variable equals 1, uh, you're still going to be left with tuition times 1 uh, as a variable. So this, right, is actually that continuous variable that's still there. So rather than adding this term up into the intercept, I'm actually right, going to have to add it to the slope. And so the slope of this line is going to change, but they're going to start at the same place. So I'll just do equals, I'll do this plus this. All right, and so the slope of this line is essentially going to decrease faster. I start at the same point, so you can do this kind of normal slope. And again, I wish I had my lecture stuff to talk about here, but it's good practice either way. So shapes, and again, it's going to start at the same place. Like they both have that 34 intercept. Right, it's just now I'm estimating a relationship as if Right? Tuition and fees disproportionately hurts um, uh, African Americans or blacks or African Americans. Essentially, as tuition goes up, their enrollment goes down faster at public schools than at private schools. Essentially, they're more sensitive to changes in tuition at public schools than private schools. Right? And so, to review, a dummy variable by itself just changes the intercept. Right. An interaction term, which, which is the dummy times the continuous, it only changes the slope. And so hopefully you can think, well, model three, well, what are we going to have here? Well, we had a dummy variable and an interaction term. So for these, essentially, we're going to have a different starting point and a different slope. But uh, let's start easy. Let's pretend that dummy variable is not in the model, and then let's graph this line. So I only care about these right now. Right, so this is for the, the, the excluded category, in our case, private, not-for-profit. So again, it started at 38, and it would have a negative slope of negative 0.087. So I can do copy. Again, oh, it's just almost insert. Copy. I want it to paste over here, but it's putting it over here. So it has this general relationship. And then, well, now let's do new intercept and then new slope. And again, this is for the public colleges. So this dummy variable, if this equals 1, it's just this number times 1. So it's going to be added to the intercept. So the new intercept will do equals. It's just this plus this. Right, and then the new slope is, um, so again, this is going to be for the interaction term. It changes the slope. It's this plus this. So I can add those up. Plus, oops. Oops, come here. This equals this um, times, oops, come on, gray, plus this. All right, and so now what's going to happen, first off, we'll see this line is going to start lower than 38, so I'll do insert, and I'll do a shape, and I'll do a line. So it's going to start lower, and then this has a slope of negative 0.087, this has a negative 0.015, so it's steeper again. So not only is it going to start lower, it's going to be more steep. All right, and so that is saying um, at public, so over here, so if I, this is for public, 
say, at public colleges, not only is there a lower percentage of enrollment, right, but to, they're actually even more sensitive to tuition changes. So as public schools get or increase tuition more, it actually decreases the problem or the percent of um, African Americans, uh, black or African Americans that enroll at the college. So there's three different types of relationships we can try and capture. Uh, which one is the most appropriate? Well, um, here is where we can go look at the adjusted R squared and say, okay, which one of these is the best, right? So this is 0 0.1285, this is 0.1222, so this one's out. It can't be this is the best model. Um, and then this one is 0.13, right? So this has the highest adjusted R squared. So we would say model three does the best job or is the most accurate representation of the true relationship between tuition and fees, right? and whether it's a public or private college that we're looking at. All right, so this is the only, if I did all this background work for, for a university, I would never even show them model one, model two, you might hide it in the appendix. You'd say, I did a bunch of research, the background and found like this was the best model. And again, right, common issues. Um, the, I'm sure this model has uh, potential issues with endogeneity or omitted variables, uh, but for simple sake, um, here's how I go. And so there's a lot going on with these. They do take a lot of practice. I'll have an additional practice kind of video um, that walks through this. We do a lot of, a lot of practice in class. Um, if you're in my class, uh, if you're observing this externally, feel free to reach out and email to me. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, again, there's a lot that can go on here, but um, getting the most accurate estimation of the, the true relationship is, is our goal.